Okay, this is a complete simplex fire alarm system from 1961 or 1962. And of course, as soon as I start talking, my dog hears something and is going to be pacing around. Sit. So everything here is original except for the pull stations. Uh, the pull stations have been replaced with modern pull stations. At some point, a firelight system was put in and they kind of repurposed some of the wiring, replaced the pull stations. The bells were just kind of abandoned up into, in, they were in enclosures in the walls. And this, and the panel itself was back in the kitchen area, which kind of factors into the way it was set up. I was able to take the door and the panel itself, but not the back box because it was uh, built directly into the concrete wall. So I had to build one. I cleaned the door up as best I could. Some of that stuff is just kind of stuck on there. And I just figured out the sizes of everything. Get this thing open here. Put some wood in there so that it would mount, not short anything out. This was on the door originally. It was super faded. So the first thing I did was lay this thing out and try to trace over it with a super fine Sharpie, which worked well enough for me to figure it out. But I also wanted to do a better, you know, just to have a better job and maybe something that I could share. So recreated it in paint.net. And that is what we have here. As far as I know, because some of it I couldn't read, this is an exact replica of that diagram. This has actually been super useful for me to figure out how some of the stuff works because I want to try to get the supervisory working. And uh, this is where I got the dates from. Here's the wires I'm going to use, just some extension cord, another crap I had laying around, and a light bulb, which I'd like to get uh, working for troubles. So we can verify and see if the trouble that you know the supervision works the pull stations are not original they are correct to the period the uh traditional t handle shaped pull station uh which i have one here somewhere there we go. these did not come out until 1973 i believe there is a patent by simplex time recorder on google patents I'll try to remember to find it and link it, but uh, I believe it was 1973. So before that, this is what they use. I think I've heard them refer to as chevrons, which I'm assuming is the sh what because of the shape. Looks like a Chevron gas station logo. I'll also add a link somewhere around here to skip right to the uh, point where I test it if you're not interested in any of this, and I'll put that in the description as well so that I can keep everybody happy. One note that you can see right here, it says removed hold, if you can't read that. This system, and pretty much any system, when it is tripped, it will stay an alarm even if you reset the kind of the initiation circuit. So in this case, if you re reset the pull station, the way this was set up and where the panel was located, I'm assuming it was a pain in the neck for them to reset it. Uh, so what they did was, they just went through and kind of bypassed one of the relays. I'll be 100% honest. I figured this out a while ago when I first tested it. I don't exactly remember how I fixed it. But basically, they had bypassed this relay that, that holds the system in alarm even if you reset the pull station until you press the reset button, which was here. I didn't add that. And uh, I got it working the way it was originally intended to. Now I'm going to attempt to mount this thing back in while I'm filming it. So this ought to be fun. That's probably pretty much what it looked like uh, when it was installed, except the back box obviously wasn't made out of wood, but that's what I had. The keys for these are 
non-existent. It's essentially an Allen head, but I found that with my trusty Harbor Freight Pittsburgh joint right here with the uh, Torx bit on it, I can get it to open. Watch it not work now. There we go. If you turn it, you'll see a little, see that little thing coming down there? That is what holds it to this little tab right here. When you pull it, it pushes this button in when it's in a regular condition. So push, this is an opposite of a normal button. When the button is pushed, it's off. When it is out, it's on. That's the same as the modern simplex pull stations. And when you pull it, when it's, it'll, it'll catch on there. There's a little mechanism and it pops the button out and then it catches on the button and stays pulled. So when we open that up, you'll see that that's this right here. Cut this. We'll make two of them. I have courtesy of Harbor Freight, some crappy connectors, but these will work just fine. We're gonna need four of those total and four. I'm not gonna show this whole thing, it's boring. Strip it, pop it on there, crimp. That's good enough. These had, essentially they had ins and outs and everything, so there's two screws, because the idea is that you would have these kind of in parallel, boom, 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 boom. And then back to the supervision at the panel. On a regular fire panel, it's right at the, you put it at the end of the line. So that, and that you get into the different styles of circuits. There's different classes of circuits and some of them loop all the way around and come back to the panel and that's class something or other. I don't remember. You generally only deal with that stuff when you're dealing with larger buildings. Pop those on there like so. Again with the flatheads. We're good to go. Pull station. Poke it through there. Pop that on there. Turn. And there we go. Key I made works better than I thought it would. Feed that through. Pop it in. The only reason I didn't show putting the panel cover on and building the rest of it is it didn't occur to me until I was done. Anybody would want to see that, but then I realized that that's the whole point of YouTube is to show what you're doing, so. Pull stations are now mounted. That's kind of what that looks like. Next thing I'm gonna do is mount the bells and then we'll start wiring this thing up. All right, I'm gonna put some connectors on the bells here. There's a backing plate on here. Holds everything in place, snaps into here. It looks like a fuse, but it's not. It's just kind of a non-conductive bar that the wires are connected into. Gonna focus, there we go. Right there is where the hammer is, so it comes up, smacks the bell, and that's it. One time, and then the whatever you're connected to turns it on and off, and that's how you get your pattern with a single stroke bell. Now, we'll snap her back together, screw this on tight, and that's how the bell hangs. Put this down through there. That's definitely too much wire. I put them on upside down. We'll leave the mistakes in with the help. This whole thing is going to tip over, probably. There we go. Snap that on here. Oh, did I do this wrong? Okay, good enough. Have everything installed, and now we can begin wiring everything up. I need to move that bell over. That's going to drive me nuts. He has to help. Yes. Mm-hmm. This thing probably weighs, oh, I don't know, 80 pounds. Panels have everything's heavy. This is what it's going to look like when it's done, but we still got to wire it up. This part here was originally intended to be a handle, but this thing is so friggin' heavy that I opted to just uh, make like feet for it. I had to make it lean back a little bit because otherwise it wanted to tip over. I just put a little piece of wood under there, a couple of hundred screws. You have your bells coming out here, right here and here. Your pulls coming out here and here, and then we'll have power going in from S1 and S4, you go up 
from both sides into the first one, and then you go through all of them and come back to S2 and S3. And at the end of S2 and S3 is this 5K resistor. So when the, when it's tripped, it shorts these two wires, this, this, this setup together, and that's how it actuates. But when it's not tripped, it goes through the unactuated sides like this. So it goes up, over, down, through the resistor, and out. And that is how it supervises the wire so that if you cut a wire, it won't, quote unquote, see this 5K resistor anymore and should go into trouble. So on the circuit, basically, you come out of S1 and S4 into a pull station, out of the pull station, can you see this? Out of the pull station to the other pull station, and then back in on S2 and S3. <laughs> Pop this through there. So that one, we'll do the same thing. We're gonna put these on here. This is probably super boring, I'm sorry guys. Personally, I'll watch hours of other people doing this stuff with whatever old junk they're hooking up, so maybe you guys wanna see this, maybe not. I'm gonna do it anyway, so that's why there's a fast forward button. There's also, by the way, a subscribe button. And if you like this stuff, that would be cool if you'd subscribe. Let's see if I did this right. Into the panel like this. All right. I have to run a, a line between these two pull stations to complete that loop. A lot of people don't like these things. Actually, here's my better pair. These are rusty because, of course, I left them... I don't know, fell off a ladder, landed in a puddle of water or something like that. There's a little bit of a skill involved in stripping wires with these things, but once you get good at it, you never go back. Twist them up together just so they're not frayed all over the place. We're basically going to connect the two sides together in parallel. Lovely. You know what we're going to do? We're going to hook up power. And this, I guess, is the part where I got to be a grown-up and remind you, if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with AC wiring. Most likely it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna hurt, but a tenth of an amp can kill you under the right circumstances, so just don't screw around if you don't know what you're doing. You bust the tab between these. It makes two independent switches. I just had this switch laying around, otherwise I, otherwise I would've used two switches. OPSP, operating power, supervisory power. That's gonna go in there like this. Power cord, definitely not to code. I think that's becoming a theme here. All right. Do a little bit of wire management here. For anybody that doesn't know, house current is AC, so there's no positive and negative. But if you want to think about it, you have a hot and a neutral. Black in the U.S., black is hot. White is neutral. So when you think about it, the black is the feed and the, and the neutral is the return. When you have a ground... It's basically also goes back to the neutral, but it's a it's a lower the idea is that it's lower resistance so that if you touch anything, electricity wants to find the quickest path to ground and uh, it'll go through the ground wire wire instead of you. But there is no grounding going on on this, so basically you just gotta be careful. Pop this through here. This thing's getting dull. There we go. Twist these together and then find a beanie for it. Twist that together. We have one half of the circuit done. Fed through from the plug on the wall all the way through to one side of each of the power inputs. Now this one is gonna go to the switch. This. We're gonna put this here. Twist these together. Connect that to here like this. We will use a screw gun. Tighten that down. Why not? Laziness. And then when we turn each one of these on, it'll send power out there and send power out here. Jam all this in here. Cover here somewhere, which I broke. Well, that's not gonna work. I know I got one somewhere. I figured I'd bring you guys along. Here's a preview. I have. A lot of old panels, including an old standard electric time one, which I rigged up. So we'll definitely wire this one up too. 
for any of you guys who want to know this, that double switch and this double switch were actually part of the original 2014 system that is, or was, on the other side of that wall there. There was a flood and there was a lot of stuff else that went on. I had to tear all that stuff down. But that's where these switches came from. We'll be festive. We'll use the green one. What the hell? See what happens when we plug it in. I don't know if you can hear that's buzzing. This one might buzz more. Yeah, you can hear the buzzing. So we got power. So we should actually be able to test this. Old school B key. Oh yeah, I guess we can't test it. I gotta hook the poles up first. Alright. So that is gonna be one of them. So we're gonna put that one on. That eh, doesn't matter. Let's call that S2, S3. This is my favorite screwdriver. Husky, Home Depot. I love this thing. There we go. So those are connected now. Put these connectors on. And now this one is going to go here. All right. All right. Technically, this thing should work. The bells will not work, but it should power up and it should trip if I did it right. I hear humming, so that's good. The meter's not going to do anything because that's part of the supervisory and pretty much none of the rest of the, a lot of the relays won't, but it should still trip. So let's find out. And there it goes. So that spins, and it's basically kicking those relays on and off. And pretty much everything else has to do with supervision, so that's basically the, the business end of the circuit right there. The dog doesn't know what that noise is. So to reset this, we open this up, pop it closed, and then hit the reset button, and we're good. So we're halfway there. Now I just got to hook the bells up and we'll test it and then uh, we'll see what we can do about getting uh, supervision to work. But again, no promises on that one. I actually just figured out that the supervisory does appear to work because I have it powered up. I don't know if you can hear that there's no hum, but when I connect this back together, which is connect, complete the circuit, you see that relay up there on the left turns on and that is supervision. So the question is, does it send anything out? I'm actually thinking as I go here, so you got, you guys are going to kind of go on this journey with me. We're going to hook up our meter to the trouble bell. Let's see what we got. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How about this one? Nope. That's definitely the supervisory relay, but I, I have to be 100% honest with you guys. I really don't know how it works. I thought that might be it. All right, so far I cannot figure that out. That relay definitely does something when you take... Where's my screwdriver? When you take off the pull station, you can see the relay will turn off on the left there, upper left. So that supervisory is definitely working but it doesn't appear to pass through to anything and I should have looked at the wiring on the back of the panel before I mounted it so I don't know if that's gonna work or not maybe somebody will watch this and know something about these but... so we have two trouble outputs trouble bell one which is right here and that one right now is reading eight volts AC for some inexplicable reason. And this one is reading a full 110, 120. This one here looks like it was added. So again, I'm not really sure what they did. I'm killing the pull station loop. So something disconnected. Still got 110 volts there. Still got like six volts AC there. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna connect this thing back to, I'm gonna Basically, all I have left to do is hook up the bells, and then we'll see if we can get it figured out from there. Now we're connect the bells up. 
to G1 and G2. Not really the right wire. I would say definitely Harbor Freight connector is not the best choice, but I'm not I'm not dissing Harbor Freight. I love that place. So G1 goes there. I should have wired a switch up to like fake a, a break in the circuit, but since I can't get the supervisory working, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll do G2. All right, so this thing is now totally connected. So I'm gonna fire it up and see if anything different happens. The buzz you hear is coming from this one. And that's adjustable. I'm plugged in. Try not to hit the side of that thing because I keep getting zapped. The bottom of this is hot and uh, it doesn't really feel all that good to hit it. This one's not doing anything. And neither is that one. It is possible that the supervisory circuit doesn't work. I mean, the thing sat for, I don't know. I think I pulled that out of that building maybe five or six years ago. So let's call that 2015. And uh, the system that was in there had been there for at least 20 years, the, the, the existing system. So, I don't know. I, I would say probably in the 80s or early 90s is when this system was taken out of service. Probably whenever the school was decommissioned and it was bought out by the other place, I'm guessing. So, it's possible it didn't work. We're just going to do the old twist together. I'm less and less sure that I can get the supervisory to work. I might have to jump it off of one of the relays because I'm pretty sure I understand how it works. But... Um, Probably the smart move would have been to trace the wires on the back of the panel before I put it in. Those are all connected. Everything is connected. And I'm gonna do what I should have done in the first place. I'm gonna take the panel out and trace the wires and look at the schematic and I'll figure it out. I'm starting to think it may have more to do with a silencing switch so that it rings a bell or turns a light on um, <clears throat> when you silence it so you don't forget to reset it because that's kind of, that's on the schematic. It's tied through this light and that's all on the supervisory side of things right there the, that on the right-hand side. So again, I'm not 100% sure, but I just want to see if I can get it to work a little bit. All right, this ought to help, but what doesn't help is that every wire is black, so... Black background, black wires, black connectors, well, brass, I guess, but I'm going to figure this out just so I kind of know what the heck's going on. Been messing around with this a little bit, and uh, the only thing I know for sure is that this relay here handles the pull station supervisory, although I can't figure out what it connects to. If we disconnect this right here. So that is for sure supervisory for the pull station, which does, I believe, match the schematic. Yeah. Relay number three. See, re the relay number six is not on there, but relay number three, which is right here, is the supervisory relay box circuit. All right, here's what I figured out so far. <clears throat> no real luck, except this one right here, this this relay is, is uh, DOA, it's done. This one right here is supposed to be for the bell circuit, to supervise the bell circuit. And these relays are all basically the same. There's an adjustable little spring on here that, you're, that you move back and forth that kind of moves the, uh, that adjusts the, where's the screwdriver? It adjusts the tension on these things right here. So that's kind of how you get the thing to be right on the edge of working when you're sending current out through devices without really powering them up. That's just kind of the electrical, uh, the electromechanical version of supervision, basically. If we disconnect the pull station, 
first off, relay three opens. And what little bit of current, ow, keep zapping myself. What little bit of current, see there is a little bit of current there, a couple, maybe a milliamp or two. So I guess that's working the way it's supposed to. This resistor is getting, um, that's fairly hot, I would say. I'm trying to figure out where I can tap in to make a trouble work because I can make that relay turn off, but it doesn't seem to be tied into anything. Okay. At this point, I think I'm going to give up. I, I, I have a theory that this panel may actually be bad. Uh, there may be other things that are wrong with it from a supervision standpoint. The relay number four there is definitely bad. The coils are open, and that one is for the bell supervision. Um, I did get the light to work, which I'll show you. Number Relay number three, which is the box circuit supervision. There's your common right there, and then there's your normally closed. So I have this tied into the open and the other end tied to the neutral power through this light bulb. So if I disconnect the... If I disconnect the pull stations, the light turns on. So ultimately, that is the supervision to some degree, because it's. But I don't think it's working all the way, and I'm not. I, I really kind of at the end of my understanding of these old panels. Um, maybe somebody will watch this and understand it. Maybe they'll know. But it, clearly, the diagram for this is not quite exactly right because it's showing this actually has more relays in her show number six there to the bottom right of the meter is not shown in the diagram and number four which is the bell circuit supervision is definitely done the the coil shot um this area here is not on the existing diagram although i have a sneaking suspicion that's just kind of tied in there for an external bell or some sort of notification. Um, it's not for reset or anything like that. So clearly, the, I mean, that's why, they, that's why they had the reset disabled and just you could turn it off because you would have had to walk all the way back to the panel. So I think they just put this thing in and just rigged it up to work. There were no rules in the 50s and 60s. So, or there, or there were, I, I don't know if there were no rules, but there were definitely fewer rules. So there is some level of supervision on this thing for sure. Um, I give up. I can't figure it out. That's pretty much it as far as the description of this thing and the setup. So I'm just going to put it back together and uh, just do a set. I guess I'll set it off and do some close ups on everything. And that'll be pretty much it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. You going to help? This is actually a few days later uh, after I made most of the bulk of the video. And I actually realized that I had not done an actual test outside of just some of the brief testing I did when I was uh, setting everything up and kind of trying to figure out the, all the problems. So this is the official test. I have it all fired up. Uh, I'm going to set it off and let it go for a while. And then I'm also going to try to zoom in on some of the moving parts and try to piece it together. You should be able to see the, you know, the motor turning, the relays going, maybe a little spark action, depending on what I can capture. So uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. Here we go.